little little disappointed in us as far as how they've handled the situation. Um, I haven't heard back from them. I'm going to follow up with them, but grease in an air bearing is a no-no. That's contamination that increases the heat in the bearing, and that ultimately causes it to fail. So, um, and, and they basically didn't even hear me out. What's up, guys? It is Eric with Paris Engineering, and today we are doing a little something different, and I apologize for the video quality. I'm not super interested in making this like production quality video. Um, basically, it's gonna be like a how-to to change the spindle in our UMC. Um, I think me and JJ have done it four or five times at this point, um, out of necessity. Um, the first spindle, we'll, we'll take the blame on. Um, it went through about two, two years of life, and, and we've run the spindle pretty hard. It had crashed a few times, learning five axes. But the second spindle we purchased from Haas directly, um, it lasted five months. Um, we also had a brand new motor installed. Um, between those two, uh, I believe the cost is $17,000. So just in January, I spent $17,000 on this $200,000 machine to get it back to running shape. And five months later, the spindle completely locks up. Um, sent that spindle out to get replaced. We already had a replacement spindle from the previous unit. Um, so we put the replacement unit in, we sent the, the brand new Haas unit out to get rebuilt, and we found out that the bearings had grease in them, which is ultimately the cause and the failure of that brand new spindle. Haas won't warranty it, they won't listen to me, they haven't sent me an email back in a few weeks. Freaking fantastic. Um, long story short, likely we won't be purchasing another Haas. Um, because we've had a lot of issues with this machine over the years. Um, not thrilled with it. I love the machine when it runs, but the machine doesn't run very, I mean it does run quite often, but it breaks down every few months. Um, we've had the conveyor belt fail, we've had the tool change fail, we've had BNC axis clamping fail multiple times, um, spindle fail, motor fail, um, there's, there's not much other else to replace on this machine at this point, but when Haas can't even send us a spindle that works for longer than five months, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed at this point. Um, anyway, the, the spindle that was rebuilt by a, a supposedly reputable company um, made noise first startup. Um, so we got another one rebuilt again, um, and now taking out this one because luckily this company offers a warranty so they have a one-year warranty so we're swapping out this spindle for another spindle that they rebuilt and they're gonna repair this one for free um, we have a feeling that whoever was assembling it didn't do a good job um, because the bearing is making quite a bit of noise and uh, there's definitely some stuff going on with it so super long story short we're gonna be doing a spindle install. Because at this point, uh, me and the other Eric, I, I, I nickname him JJ, um, we've gotten pretty good at this. Um, we'll probably have it done in about two to three hours. Um, and hopefully this helps other American manufacturers that are potentially looking into changing the spindle on the UMC themselves. Um, I know me and him were, were fairly worried about doing it the first time. Um, it's an expensive machine, they're expensive parts, but overall, the install is like stupid easy. Um, way harder to uninstall and install an engine on a modern car. Um, so, I guess we'll get to it. Um, again, production quality is not going to be there today. Uh, we're basically looking at doing something down and dirty, not adding two times the amount of work. So, the video is just going to be what it is. I'll kind of talk here and there and say, hey, this is what we're doing. But otherwise, um, we're just going to get it done and get the machine back up and running and then eventually hopefully sell this machine and get something better because I, I can't handle um, the operating costs on a machine that breaks down every few months. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so first I want to apologize from JJ. I think he's going shirtless today. Sorry. Um, first part of the install or removal we're gonna remove this big ass hood. Um, basically, we're gonna jog it all the way to the right, drop it down, unscrew some bolts on the bottom side and up, and then on the top side, 
there's some more bolts. Um, I don't know how many total, probably about 20. I believe they're all like 3, th 3 30 seconds, 5 30 seconds. Um, and then we'll pull that hood off. So that'll be step one. These are the bolts I'm talking about, um, so that's why you need to go all the way down. Um, yep. Alright, so all the bolts are off. Uh, remember, there's some up top, I didn't show you those, but um, they're all along the, the back side. Um, so with the V all the way down, we're going to draw a wide little back a little bit. And it helps to have a second pair of hands, but uh, right now JJ's um, outputting a program so that we can run the router. Um, so I'm gonna do it by myself, but basically the entire unit goes up and then towards you. And then the idea is that it'll actually clear that hood up there, which is why you kind of put wide back. So we now have a look at basically everything. Um, ultimately, we're gonna be working on the bottom and the top a little bit. Um, from the top, we're gonna take off the fan. We're gonna take off that black plate so that we can undo four bolts that hold the motor to, I guess you could call this like a, a frame, the spindle frame. Um, it holds it to the frame. And then uh, once we do that, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna undo these six bolts and the spindle literally just drops out. Um, we also have to deal with the airline, which is right there. That's easy to take off. Um, I think it's like a 10 millimeter push to connect hose. That is for air and oil to the spindle. But otherwise, at that point, the, the spindle literally just drops straight out. Um, it's such a scary, easy install. And removal um, doing the motor is quite a bit more involved I will say that um, we ended up going out the top um, but I know that Haas documentation says go out the bottom but we went out the top with a forklift and that worked really nicely in my opinion we had to just disassemble some of the sheet metal um, again just trying to help out anyone else out there uh, I know this is probably gonna be a boring video but might as well get something out of our misfortune i hope all right not sure if you guys can see me or not probably maybe all right we're in the machine um three eighths we're gonna take off this black plate and then we're gonna remove the fan so that we can um we can access those bolts i was talking about on the motor that helps for for alignment and it also helps during um the install of the spindle um if it's rigidly mounted, it makes it a little bit more difficult to tell if the uh, spindle is actually going into the motor the correct way. So that is why Haas, and, and I agree with them, that's why I recommend visiting those motor bolts. You're also going to have to align the motor to the spindle anyways, so you might as well just do it right now um, versus doing it afterwards. Uh, so that's what's happening. Also, uh, for anyone wondering or is curious, um, all this stuff is for the most part documented pretty well by Haas. Um, so you can follow along with their directions. I think our route is a little bit faster as far as dropping the spindle. Um, they have like a specific V um, contraption to hold the spindle. Uh, we've found that you don't really need that. Um, so, the choice is yours.
right, so with that big plate off, you can now get these little nuts for the fan. They are 3 8 inch nuts. Um, obviously pretty, pretty loose, not tight. We're going to actually remove the fan to get it out of our way. side of the spindle carrier there's this this guy you slide it up and then you can disconnect the fan no. all right so right there that's what you disconnect all right so we have our extendo cedo cuz like I don't know 30 inches of damn extension and that's gonna go up in there and then we're gonna come down right around here here and there'll be bolts I'll show you guys up up top with a flashlight um, not very easy to do or see but um, yeah we'll loosen that about one full turn on each one that's enough and uh, and then we'll start working on the bottom of the spindle all right guys we are up top looking down um, so we got some through spindle coolant we have a motor that's the encoder right there um, it's all encapsulated with some some like bracing that's where we pulled so like there and there we used a chain to pull out the uh, the motor when we had to change the motor um, the motor was 10 grand by the way just for information um, so there is one of the bolts right there and you can see like the extension comes up enough. Um, so then there's another one there, another one there, and another one there. They're not exactly fun to get to, but um, obviously able to. And we'll do that real quick, and then we'll work on the bottom. All right, so there is the air oil tube for the spindle. Um, basically, we're gonna remove the hose that push to connect. You push down on the orange part, pull out the hose, and then we're gonna remove that 90 degree. Um, that allows the spindle to actually drop out of the machine. Otherwise, you would probably break that 90 degree. So we're gonna do that real quick off camera because I, I don't see a reason to show you guys that. But um, then then basically the spindle's pretty much ready to drop down um, with those bolts. All right, so this is removed. I don't know if you can see, sorry. That's finally removed. Um, so basically we're going to end up lowering the spindle on this location on some aluminum. Um, yes, everything's dirty right now. We don't care because the spindle's going to back to, um, the spindle builder. But before we let it down, I'm going to make it easy on myself and take out like four of these bolts real quick. Because once you put it down on here, it's, it's a lot more difficult to actually access the bolts. So I'm going to have an extension and just spin out four of them real quick. Then we'll drop it down, take two more out. The bolts are, I believe, 560. Alright, so all six of the bolts are loose. Four of them are fully removed. And uh, now we're going to lower down on here. Uh, hit the e-stop. And obviously, you should hit the e-stop probably all the time, guys. Uh, Wherever you feel unsafe about, just hit the stop. Anyway, we're gonna drop it down, handle jog, Z down, um, then it's gonna be resting on here. We'll undo these last two bolts real quick, and then, um, and then handle jog Z up, and spin will be free. As you guys can see, spindle's out. Um, we're gonna take this out of the machine. We're gonna basically prepare the new one and 
uh, do everything in opposite order. And we're Let's back see. on the weekly spindle change with our Haas UMC 750 SS. So, when we get the new spindle, oh, she's about to come off. So this is the new spindle. We're greasing up the O-ring real quick, greasing up the transfer tube. Not sure if you can see that. The biggest thing is that, um, so when you get it ready, it's basically to have the oil and airport in the correct location. So we roughly have that at, you know, I don't know, 90 degrees roughly from the machine. Um, we have the spindle in roughly the same location. We'll obviously be able to handle jog or move the spindle itself um, as we start lowering the, uh, the spindle carrier onto the spindle. Um, we're actually pre-installing a spindle shim because on the past three spindles, yes, we've been through that many in that in this short amount of time, we've had to put a shim right here. We know which size shim will still indicate in the spindle because we always do that. Um, but instead of going up with no shims and then indicating it, we're just gonna start with a shim because that's what has happened the past multiple times. What you're gonna see here shortly is that um, Eric, uh, AKA JJ, is gonna drop the spindle carrier onto the spindle. And we get when we get to right around this location, we found that if you have somebody strong enough to actually hold the spindle up and find the hole, find the, um, there's three uh, dowels up here that basically spin the spindle. Um, it's easier if you hold it up and then um, Eric will like, Eric will like uh, spin the spindle and um, we found that that's easier than dropping the spindle and trying to find it with the motor loose and everything um, because this weighs so much. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, the plan is. I apologize for our machinist. And uh, real quick, we're, we're grabbing the plastic bushings that go in here um, from the old spindle and throwing them in there. Um, those help dampen vibrations between the motor and the spindle. seem like this um, spindle was built correctly by um, the people that incorrectly built the previous one. Um, I'll, I guess I'll probably have Clay put in like a comment on what happens, but supposedly they're going to warranty this one and fix it for free. Um, we'll see here in a few days, I guess, if they do. But um, that one basically failed in eight days. Um, initial startup, it sounded loud. I made note of it. I, I asked them multiple questions. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll at least be, we'll, we'll at least have a second spindle ready to go at any time now. Um, little, little disappointed in Haas as far as how they've handled the situation. Um, I haven't heard back from them. I'm gonna follow up with them, but grease in an air bearing is a no-no. That's contamination that increased the heat in the bearing and that ultimately caused it to fail. So. Um, and, and, and they basically didn't even hear me out on the warranty claim. And I, and I do understand that, yes, we did install it, but at this point, there's no way that we would put grease in the spindle bearings. Uh, we didn't cause that. We, we didn't do anything inside the spindle itself. So how grease got in there was because they did it during their build. And, and that's a manufacturing defect, in my opinion, and they should stand behind their product a little bit. But... Um, pretty disappointed in, in that respect because that's basically seven thousand dollars down the drain um, we've now we've now bought one spindle from Haas one motor and we've had two spindles rebuilt um, and, and that totals easily over like twenty six thousand dollars 
just in, in less than a year. So something to think about when um, people see us using the machine. Um, it's, it's not it's not free. Um, we're always maintaining it. We're always keeping up on it. But something that a lot of people don't think about is just because we have this machine doesn't mean we're not still putting money into it. Um, Manufacturing is not cheap. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it's definitely not cheap. So I guess uh, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to touch off all the tools so we can get back to uh, production. But uh, until next time, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I know it's probably not what you're used to, but um, we figured we might make uh, lemonade out of lemons. <laughs>